We're going to start by looking at the differences between self-concept, self-awareness, and self-esteem. Let's first look at self-concept. What is it? Well, self-concept is how we perceive ourselves, our feelings and thoughts about our own strengths and weaknesses, our image of who we are. There are several factors that go into, that may go into, forming our self-concept. And these are in no particular order, but one of them is others' images of you, how they react to you, how they respond to you, how they communicate with you. And we have what we call the looking glass self. Looking glass is really another description of a mirror, the mirror self, the looking glass self. And this, this tells us that we notice how other people might respond to us or how they treat us or how they react to us. And this can reflect back on our image of ourselves. For instance, if you walk into a room and no one looks at you, no one says hello to you, no one, uh, and these might be people, you're at the office or at your place of work, you go into the break room and uh, usually people are friendly to you, but no one's looking at you, no one's reacting to you, you might start to wonder, hmm, what, what did I do? What, what's wrong with me? What? Yeah, that could reflect back on your own self-concept, something like that. And there are many examples of the looking glass self. Another factor that might contribute to our self-concept is comparing ourselves with other people. And I'm sure all of us have done this at one time or another. But, you know, we may compare ourselves if we're good at something and they aren't or if they're good at something and we aren't um, if someone has a new car and we don't I mean these are just types of comparisons we might make with other people they may not even reflect negatively on us we just do make a differentiation sometimes by comparing ourselves to other people and how we are our image of ourselves is sometimes sometimes that contributes to our image of ourselves how we compare to others. Another, another factor that may affect our self-concept is what the culture tells us, what the culture teaches us. For example, in our society, what is success? That's a good question. A lot of times when I ask that in class, people will say having money, uh, having an education, a college education, having a nice house, Let's just take those things for an example. So we might look at that and think, hmm, well, I didn't go to college. I don't have a lot of money. That can affect our image of ourselves. So what our culture teaches us to be or what we should be or what we shouldn't be, that can affect our image of ourselves. And the last one we're going to talk about that might affect our self-image, or rather, excuse me, self-concept, is the way we interpret ourselves, what we do, what we say, our self-interpretation, and our self-evaluation of our own behavior. One example might be lying, for example. If we've been taught as a kid by our family not to lie, never to lie. It's not good to lie. One day if we find ourselves lying for whatever reason, we might think to ourselves later, oh, I did a bad thing. I should not have done that. I don't like the fact that I did that. And that, that can contribute to one self-concept. Now there's a diagram of these four on page 51 that's an illustration of how they, the four might go into our self-concept in some degree or another. And of course, every individual is different how much of each of these will go into forming a person's self-concept. 
Now let's look at self-awareness. What is self-awareness? Self-awareness is the extent to which you know who you are, what your traits are, what your weaknesses are, what your strengths are, the limitations on what you can do, how you express your emotions, how you behave in certain situations. These all contribute to our self-awareness, how much we know ourselves. This is probably a good time to bring up the Joe Harry window. The Joe Harry window is made up of four quadrants and this Joe Harry window uh, is, it can represent each one of us because we each have an open self, a hidden self, a blind self, and an unknown self. So let's look at each one of these quadrants and what goes into them. Our open self contains everything we know about ourselves and that other people also know, whether they can tell just by seeing us or we've told them, you know, every everything we know about ourselves and other people do too. This is the open self. The hidden self is everything we know about ourselves, but other people don't. They wouldn't know until we tell them. So the hidden self contains everything we know and others don't. Now it's getting really interesting. Let's look at the blind self. Think about this one a little bit. The blind self contains everything other people know about us, but we don't know about ourselves. Wow, how could this be so? Well, Think about times when you've observed how someone acts in a certain situation. You might think, boy, he's really jealous or he's really um, getting angry at some little thing. You know, it doesn't take much to set him off, you know, that kind of thing. Just a small example. That person we're observing may not realize what we're seeing about them. So all of those types of things would go into your blind self. Others know it about you, but you don't. Now look at this last one. This is pretty wild. Your unknown self. We all have an unknown self as well. These, this quadrant contains everything we don't know about ourselves and no one else does either. <laughs> well, how could this be? Hmm. Let's say I've never tried to play golf. I have no idea if I'd be good at golf and no one else does either. If I uh, have never tried to be a supervisor, I don't know if I'll be good at managing and supervising and no one else does either. So each one of these quad quadrants contains information. On page 54, there are two Joe Harry windows. You might want to look at each of them. Two different Joe Harry windows and the one on the left would be what type of person. Think about that. Person with a very large hidden self. The Joe Harry window on the right at the top of page 54 has a very large blind self. What kind of person might have a very large blind self? Just something to think about. Let's go back and talk a little bit more about self-awareness. There are some ways that we can actually improve our self-awareness and self-awareness should be growing throughout our lives. Hopefully we're always learning more about ourselves. Now one way to grow your self-awareness and learn more about yourself is by listening to other people and what they're telling you. And if you remember the the blind self quadrant of the Joe Harry window, this contained everything that other people know about you but you don't know about yourself. So by asking people or listening to what people are telling you about what they observe and how you appear, you might actually grow in, in learning something of yourself and growing in self-awareness. 
Something else that you can do is by opening up to others. And in, this, this tends to encourage people to give you feedback. If they get the feeling that you're receptive to talking about qualities you might have, how you might have appeared in different situations, it will encourage them to give you feedback and give you little bits of information that help you become more aware of yourself. Closely related to this, I, I would say, is to actually seek information from other people about yourself. For instance, if you do a speech in a class and a friend of yours is also in the class, you might say, oh, I really felt nervous up there. How did I seem? How did I appear? How did I look out here in the audience? And they would say then, knowing you're open to finding out about those things about yourself, they might say, well, you really look great. I couldn't tell you were nervous, or they might say, you were fine, you ummed a lot. Um, you know, they <laughs> so they'll be open. If you ask them, they were, will be more apt to share with you how they, how they, what they learned about you and what they know about you that you may not realize about yourself. Now, <laughs> this is something that all of us do at one time or another. We do it all the time, actually. I know that I do, dialoguing with yourself. And by this, I don't necessarily mean talking to yourself out loud, but think about times when you've thought about a situation afterwards. You might think to yourself, why did I act like that? Why did I say that? And by thinking about why you do things, you might discover more about yourself. Let's look at self-esteem. Self-esteem is how you value yourself, how you like yourself. And I always like to remind people because it's really easy to have low self-esteem once in a while. We sometimes beat ourselves up and it's too bad because each of us is very unique, fantastic, irreplaceable value. value irreplaceably valuable with our own special talents and gifts whether we realize it or not. 